Hello everyone, I'm Michael Fudge. It's time for our List Lab walkthrough. Let's get going. Okay, here we are in 1.1. And in this U code, we have a list of stocks. And our goal is to print out the item, each item in that list, just like we did when we printed out the shopping list. So we're going to kind of follow the same sort of process that we did with the shopping list up here. We're going to use our for loop or stock in stocks. And then we can say print stock. Right? So again, this is the collection of things that's iterable. This is one of the, each of the things that we iterate over. So first is IBM, then is AAPL, then is Goog, then is Misfit, then is Twitter, then FUB. Just like that. Now it says we want to say you own before it, so we want to use an F string here. That's basically the only real wrinkle in this one. You own stock. There you go. You own IBM, you own AAPL, you own Goog. So this hopefully gives you a better sense of what is going on with the for loop. The for loop works over a iterable collection. That's what the list is. We can go over that one at a time. And each for each item in that list, every time through the list, that gets assigned to stock. So the first time through the for loop, IBM is the stock. The next time, AAPL is the stock. The next time, it's Goog. The next time, stock is MSFT. Then finally, at the end, stock is FB. So the very last stock is FB. Okay, that's 1.1. Okay, what 1.2 is teaching us is that we can take a list and access items directly from the list, just like you would access an item from a string or slice a string. So up here we have some examples where I'm grabbing, picking things directly out of the shopping list. We're going to do the same thing down here for the stocks. So I want the second and fourth stocks. So remember, the list index starts with zero. So the second stock would be stocks... Stocks one would be the second stock, and stock four would be zero, one, two, three. That's the fourth stock. Microsoft. Okay, now to get them to print on one line, I just print them both, right? So I could say print, print stocks and the other stock. And I can print them like that. There you go. That gives me my two stocks. So if I, just to continue with this example, if I wanted to print the last stock, no matter how many stocks I have, that would be, you know, print, let's do it this way. This is the last stock. And then I'm going to print stocks minus one. That's the last stock in the list. Last stock is FB. Okay, that's 1.2. Okay, here we are in 1.3. In this one, we are debugging a program. Basically, what we have now is an indefinite loop that will ask us to enter a command, either A to add a stock, R to remove a stock, or Q to quit manipulating our stocks. And if we enter an A, it will add the stock to the beginning of the list. If we enter an R, it will remove the stock from the list and then print the list back out. And then Q will quit the program. And how do we add and remove things from the list? Well, that was done up here in this example where we, we talk about the list methods up here, different things you can do to a list. Okay. So let's see if we can figure this out. I'm going to run this. It's a debug, so I'm going to run it. Okay. And of course, there's errors. You know, it says false is not defined on line three. Now, we never loop with false like this anyway. We always loop while true, right? We want it to loop, so it's got to be true. And then I never like to do a while true without making sure the loop's going to stop. So choice, input, enter a command. Uh, if choice is a Q, break. That looks good. That should break the loop. Let me try that. Q, loop breaks. Good. Let's try to add a stock. 
Enter symbol to add. How about X, Y, Z? I don't know what that stock is, making it up. And I get an error. Stir object cannot be interpreted as an integer, okay, on this line. So what am I doing on this line? I'm trying to insert the stock. So I'm probably not using insert right. That is my guess because stocks is a list. How do I know this? See that up there? Stocks is a list. And I'm probably not using insert correctly, is my guess. It's my educated guess with this particular error. So, just to show you a couple things, if I go down and say, hey, what's the type of stocks? It's going to say it's a list, right? So that means it's got methods on it, and um, the insert is a method, so I can get help on stocks. What am I trying to do in insert? And it says I need to insert with an index and then the object I want to insert. Insert object before index. So I have the object then the index. So I actually need to put the index first. So that's why it says stir cannot be interpreted as integer because the first thing that you insert must be an integer. Um, that's the index of where it goes in the list. Okay, that looks better. Let's run it again. Let's try to add a stock. Uh, X, Y, Z, okay? And it says your stocks, and it doesn't print my stocks out. It just says your stocks, stocks. So let's fix that, right? It should say your stocks and then show me the list of stocks. So here's the list of stocks, but it needs to be an F string, right? So I need to interpolate it like that. Let's try it now, add. Let's add Facebook. Okay, there's my stocks. Let's add another one. Let's add IBM. Okay, let's add another one. Let's add X, Y, Z. I don't know what that is. There you go. So it, now it seems to be adding my stocks. Now let's try to remove some stocks. Uh, remove. Which stock do I want to remove? IBM. Of course you're going to get an error. It's a debugging uh, exercise. And it says name stocks is not defined. Again, whenever you get something is not defined, it's always the same error. It's not the name of the variable you're using. It's not the name of the function you're using. So check, in this case, for a typo, it says stocks. I think I meant, I think I meant stocks like this, right? Okay, let's try that. Now, if I uh, ask to, now the stocks are gone, right? Because they were in memory. So, so if I say remove, there's no symbols to remove, you know? So I'm going to get an error, okay? It also says list object has no attribute delete, which is actually a different error than I was expecting. But let me demonstrate this, uh, this error. So let's add a stock, IBM, and let's remove a stock, IBM, and then I get list object has no attribute delete. That means that there is no method called delete on this list. So let's do a dir. Dir, what's the name of my list? Stocks. Let's see what it's called. It's not called delete. Maybe it's remove. So I don't know for sure, so I'm gonna get help on it. Or I could just look up the exercise I did up here, which explains which one it is, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna show you how to be resourceful. Okay, remove value. Okay, it is remove. So it doesn't. it's not delete, it's remove. Okay, let's try it again. Uh, add a stock, IBM. Remove a stock, IBM. Okay, now it says your stock stocks. I think I'm missing the F in front of the F string, right? Because I want to see the stocks. All right. I think that should do it. That should give me everything I want. Now, this is like a little mini in-memory database of your stock. So let's add a stock. Let's add a stock um, AAPL. Let's add a stock. Let's add Microsoft. Let's add a stock. Let's add Facebook. Um, let's add a stock. Let's add GameStop. Okay. Let's remove a stock. Let's remove Microsoft. There we go. So now it seems to be working, right? It removed Microsoft. Now let's remove Apple. Okay. It works. There we go. So that is debugging. 1.3. Okay, this takes us to 1.4. In 1.4, 
we are going to write a program that implements this algorithm that allows us to uh, input a comma separated string of numbers and then turn that into a list and then parse the list into actual numbers then sort the list of numbers and then print out the winning numbers okay so this is very similar to what we did up here in this example and I will use a comprehension I'll actually write it without a list comprehension talk about it and then write it with a comprehension in hopes of helping you better understand what the hell a list comprehension is. List comprehension is nothing really more than a um, way to apply an iteration over a list and return back a whole list rather than rebuilding a list yourself. Okay? All right, let's give it a shot here. So let's input a uh, separated string of numbers. So let's do um, text input enter winning lottery numbers. Lotto numbers separated by comma by a comma okay that's step one then we need to split that string into a list so I'm just gonna say tokens is text split and we're gonna split that on that comma okay and then we're, right now I'm just gonna print my text and print my tokens. I need to see where I'm at so I can see where I need to go next. And let's enter some winning lotto numbers. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's my raw input. And that is it's that is that raw input split into tokens, so a list of string values. So I want to take each of these string values and then turn it into a number. Okay, I want to turn it into a number by applying a loop to this where I do something like this I might say numbers is nothing it's an empty list and then I might say for item in tokens number equals int item then numbers add now let's just do um, append number and then when we're all done down here at the bottom we have I can just print numbers okay, and now I have let's put my winning model numbers in there two four six eight ten and I have my text on line four I print my text and then these are the text tokenized into a list and then this is a conversion of each of those text tokens into a integer see how I had to write a for loop to do that I have to loop over the list and produce another list whenever you have to loop over a list and produce another list this is where a list comprehension makes a lot of sense the list comprehension would look like this so I'm gonna keep this code here and I'm gonna write the list comprehension like this I'm gonna say numbers is going to be for number for item in tokens and what do I want to do I want to do um, int item it's kind of weird how you write it but you write it backwards so I'm going to apply the function int item for every item in the list of tokens and then I want to make that into a list and so this line six is the same as line seven eight nine and ten it just replaces that so don't believe me don't believe the hype let me just comment these out and two four six eight ten get the same thing okay so that does work list comprehensions it's a way to apply a function to a list and return back the same list okay you can actually use an if in list comprehensions too like you can say four items in tokens you know if item is bigger than 10 or whatever you could do that you can add that an if in there too if you really wanted to okay let's finish this off so i'm going to take those numbers and sort them sort number sort 
sort, and then that, then I have my final numbers. Uh, winning. So print winning numbers. And you, you know the way they're drawn, the way they're drawn, and the way that they are, the way that they're drawn, and the way that they are displayed are different, right? So I'm gonna run this. Okay, so you might draw a 54, then a 10, then a 3, then an 8, um, then a 25. Those are your winning numbers, right? But when they get presented, they get presented in numerical order. So 3, 8, 10, 25, 54. So even though they were drawn randomly, they're presented in sorted order. So that it ends up being the entire program. And what made it short and simple is the fact that I was able to use a list comprehension. Don't have to use one, but it does make things a lot easier when you need to apply a function to a list and you want to return back a list again in place, right? Okay, that's it for our lab walkthrough. Goodbye now.